got a story to tell. I'm excited. Are we telling the truth or are we going to lie? What are we going to do? Hi, Gotham. Hi, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Thank you so much for your time. A pleasure to talk to you. And I'm a huge fan of Bon Jovi <laughs> since wow. I was years ago. And it's amazing. So um, I, uh, I'm going to start like, why Bon Jovi? And why did this project, how this project come, in, come to you? Yeah, um, so John actually approached me uh, almost two years ago now. <clears throat> um, he had seen something I had done. Historically, I've really focused mostly in sports and worked with a lot of athletes. He's a big sports fan, so he had seen something I had done on the football player, Tom Brady. And he said, you know, Tom's got 20 years, pretty good, but I'm about to have 40 years. I think we were in year 39 at the time of the band's existence. And he said, we've never really told our story. I want to, you know, I think this is a time to do it. Um, are you interested? And I, you know, I, I wouldn't say I was a gigantic fan. I was a casual fan. I'd grown up around the music and was certainly familiar with it. But um, yeah, that got me, you know, intrigued for sure. And then, and he was like, by the way, I'll give you all the access you want, interviews, I can connect you with the guys, all that sort of stuff. And then there was this other piece that, you know, near 39, there was something going on with his voice I started to observe. And I said, John, what's happening? He said, oh, well, I've been losing my voice and I'm about to actually go do these rehearsals and then I'm going to go on tour in April of 2022 and I don't know we'll see what happens this might be it and he said but that's not for the documentary and I said no no that's for the documentary that's really important now and uh, I convinced him to let me document that and um, so that became a big part of I think the series yeah which is amazing I love the the way that you edit together because you have like the old stuff the the new stuff and everything that he 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 going through i i love the way that you you work it on and i love it and it was uh, since you work with sports and now a musician was easier to work with a, a, a sport person or a musician <laughs> You know, it's, it's actually a lot of the same stuff, you know, not, I mean, in this case, you actually had um, a physical injury that he was trying to come back from. So that's, you know, I've done that with Kobe Bryant and Conor McGregor and other athletes. Um, so that's something I was familiar with. But I would say even more than that, like, you know, what, what it takes to be great, to be the best is, you know, it's not just talent and being gifted and all that. It's the work it's the willingness to come back you know when people tell you no you don't have it you're never going to achieve that it's the okay i'll show you you know and that so those are all very familiar things i've seen working with athletes and john is is that that's his story you know when his first hit song runaway you know when he recorded it and 10 different record companies said Meh, no i don't think this is going to work he found the 11th one you know uh, or i wouldn't even say he found a dj to help him get that song out there and that led to the record company but you know he's that guy who's like never takes no for an answer he had such strong self-belief um and i thought that was familiar you know to, to a lot of the athletes i'd worked with and do, during your research what the thing that most surprised you about john or about the band um, I think that, you know, John's a songwriter at heart, you know, like a lot of us who are fans, you know, probably know the, the performances, the hair band days, the, you know, also the actor, the all that sort of stuff. Um, but, you know, he early on told me, no, but this is songwriting. That's what matters. And that was similar. Richie said the same things. Like, if you don't have a song, you don't have anything. And that was the thing that, like, sort of really motivated them at the beginning. And even now, um, it's writing, then recording, then performing in that order is like the loves. And so that was that was sort of surprising to me. I, I didn't know that. And um, and then I'd say the other thing is just like the I said earlier, the sheer willing it, the work, the work ethic, you know, and it was there in the beginning, it's still there now, and it's the reason, I think, why something lasts 40 years. The archive 
uh, images, the pictures, yeah. everything is it's 40 years. Yeah. How did you handle that? You know what I mean? Yeah. Because it's a lot. It's a lot, you know, it's, and it's a personal archive. It's, you know, in their case, the band really <clears throat> um, came onto the scene in the 80s. And that was really when MTV came onto the scene and VH1 later into the 90s. Um, so there was also that they were documented then, um, you know, you have obviously different members. So you're going to do a lot of different interviews. Um, I think this, the thing is time, give me time, give me your trust, you know, and, um, I'll figure this out. And, um, he did, and he was very trusting. He was also very occupied, you know, working on his voice and figuring out what he was going to do. Um, so. You know that that to me is what you need you need time and then you need you need a team and i was lucky to sort of have some great people around me yeah but like make the decision you know what i mean to which one which yeah. art you're gonna use it i think oh my god it's so much it's yeah. amazing and now like you did a lot of stuff like you you must have listened all this their music do you have like a favorite <laughs> even though you're not a huge fan before before no but... i'm a huge fan now for sure john would definitely <laughs> want me to say legendary which is his newest song you know that's out there now um i i like everyone else you know living on a prayer and keep the faith and i recently watched um the movie um young guns again wanted you know dead or alive is a big part of that um i didn't know i guess i didn't realize like, oh, John did a country album. I really like this, <laughs> like, you know, this is fun. So it's hard, you know, like I play, I have the Bon Jovi search on my Spotify now, you know, quite a bit, so I listen to. Um, so I, I love it all, you know, it's, there's so much good stuff out there and it's fun to revisit it. Also, because it's across such a long span of time. So we all associate music with different parts of our lives. And so, you know, there's stuff I remember when I was a teenager and stuff I remember now as a dad, you know, and um, it's, it's pretty great. That's amazing. Gotham, this is the time that I have with you. I just want to thank you so much for your time and a pleasure to meet you and a huge fan. Thank you so much for this. Of course. For this mini, it's like a mini documentary. <laughs> so thank you so much. I love it. Thank you. It's me and you. There was no plan B in my life, ever. Bon Jovi was all or nothing. Five guys from nowhere. And if you work hard enough and you dream big enough, you can make it. Ah, there's some young kid around here from New Jersey who's making some noise. They gave me the opportunity to record on weekends and nights. We would go in at like four in the morning and start doing original songs. And bad medicine is what I need. This sonic boom happened. The energy of the band, undeniable. Like a freight train coming at you. Now, man, we're a bunch of kids from New Jersey. What do you guys think? Some of the songs I wrote in my bedroom in New Jersey. I remember the day we wrote Living on a Prayer, not thinking much of the song. I said, that's the best song we've written to date. John's choruses demand to be sung by 20,000 people in an arena. <laughs> We were just crushing it. Anything that every one of those bands talks about, we did. It was real fun. And I thought everybody else was enjoying it too. Wrong. I've gone out the next day and he's just coming in. It destroyed our marriage, but I don't think I should have been married at that time anyway. It almost killed us. Every night was a war. I don't regret leaving, but I regret how I did it. Nobody expected Richie to quit in the middle of the night. It was heartbreaking. It was taking a toll. I went out of here. And what I meant was, out of Bon Jovi. Ooh, we got a One thing you can't be in this world is a quitter. So there's no way we're gonna slow down. This is the real me, the gray hair, the whole 10 yards. John's going through his challenges. I'm optimistic, but I'm scared. I don't know if there's gonna be a happy ending. With every decade comes another life's lesson. It's all or nothing. That's why the legacy matters. Regrets, that key changes. <laughs> you can't be 60 years old and expect to hit that note anymore. If you like to support or continue to support Jan on camera, don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, and share the videos. <laughs>